What's good, YouTube? This is Box Wave. Now, if you were here the other night, I did the uh, live commentary for the Regis Pro Gray fight against Danielito Zoria. Um, very, very competitive fight, but it was definitely one of the worst fights of this year so far. I mean, you had Pro Gray, who was coming for you know, try to make the fight happen, where Zoria was doing a lot of movement. He had like a herky jerky style. And it was even in the hometown of Regis Prograde down in New Orleans, it was just not a good performance. You know, the crowd wasn't into it. Uh, as I was live, you know, people in the comments was not into the fight. Everyone was bored. There wasn't many landed, clean landed punches between the two of them. I personally think Zaria did enough to pull it off, um, even though um, he wasn't the aggressor. I still thought he did enough to win the fight. You know, if I had to pick a winner, even though I don't like his style, even though I wasn't rooting for him, it doesn't really matter. I have to be honest. And I was, if you were here, you would know that I thought that Zaria pulled off the fight. All right. Without even counting the questionable knockdown in the first round. Now, I saw it. You guys saw it. Saw right hand land. Regis Progre fell back. Tried to grab onto Zaria on his way down, which he did, and Zaria went down with him. But the punch was clean. Even um even Progre said it in his post fight interview. He basically said like he got caught with a good shot and he think it might have been a knockdown. So look, it wasn't a good performance. Um it wasn't, you know, and I think guys that were a little bit un unsure on fighting him before, they're going to have interest in fighting him now. And that's just not Teofimo Lopez. It's not just going to be Devin Haney. I think anyone in the division is going to have confidence in wanting to fight him now more than before. You know, because all this time... Reach's program has been a guy that has been kind of avoided in the division. You know what I mean? Um, but what people got to understand, because everybody goes to their very extremes when they see these kind of performances. Some of these fighters are going to fight guys that stylistically is not a good matchup for them. You know, and I was just saying this in a video that I was doing uh, with uh, Jerome Boos Ennis talking about his last fight against Karen. Sometimes these fighters fight movers that they just can't get to you know what i mean um certain certain fighters like regis progre just not quick enough on his feet just not great at cutting off the ring um and then he also with zaria the only thing is too that you you gotta add he's just not a mover that doesn't that can't punch he can actually punch you know he has a decent knockout ratio and you could see in the fight you saw in the arnold barbosa fight that he hurt him in that fight, you know, and I think he was able to drop Regis program in this fight. So, Zaria was just a bad stylistic matchup for Regis Progre. You know, maybe we can say that Progre is a little overrated, or maybe we could say that maybe he didn't, uh, you know, train and prepare for this fight like he has in other fights in the past. But with all of that being said, and to add to that, Zuriel is also a replacement for the uh, the original opponent for Regis Program. We know that this was just a homecoming fight. This fight was his first fight with the zone and matchroom. So, you know, he's just landing at a new home and he's trying to get the bigger fights. But this was a disaster of the fight. Again, one of the worst fights I've seen this year. It was definitely Regis Progress. Worst performance, his only bad performance that I've seen ever. This is his only bad performance. I mean, even with the loss to Josh Taylor, it was still a good fight. It was still a very competitive fight, still a close fight. And people to this day still say that some of them thought that Regis Progate won the fight. I thought it was close. I thought it could have gone either way. But this fight here, um, just not a good performance for him. Uh, not a fight that I think he won. I, I think... It, every round was damn near you know i don't want to say that it was a swing round every round was a swing round it, it wasn't but what i'm saying is being that there wasn't a lot of punch thrown or landed a lot of these rounds by were won by one or two punches 
people that think Regis Progre won the fight, they're basing it off the fact that he was coming forward most of the time. You know, he was being the aggressor. But you got to be effective with your aggression. You know what I mean? You just can't just be coming forward and you're getting clocked in the head with right hands on your way in. You get hit with jabs. And not only that, the exchanges that they had, I felt like Regis wasn't even doing well in the exchanges that had. I thought this Zaria was just a little better at landing the cleaner shots between the two. Prograde did drop him in the second round. But outside of that round, Prograde then never really had a great round. You know what I mean? Um, I thought the scorecards were ridiculous. Um, they were extremely wide for uh, Regis Progre. I think there was like a 118, 109 type of card, 117, 111, something like that. It's just It was a split decision, but those, I believe it was a robbery based on those scorecards. Those scorecards, the fight was close, but the scorecards were ridiculous. You know what I mean? People got to remember that styles make fights. Just a few weeks ago, everyone was saying that Regis Progre would knock out Devin Haney because if Regis Progre would land the left hands that Lomachenko landed throughout that whole fight, they would say that he would knock Devin Haney out. Now that Regis looked bad in this fight, they're saying that, oh, Devin Haney would beat him easily. Just, just look how... Look how boxer fans change their views that quickly. You know what I mean? It takes one fight for everyone to change their opinions. Um, look, I'm not saying Devin Haney wouldn't win the fight. You know what I mean? But what I am saying is that that's a completely different fight. Devin Haney is not running anywhere. You know what I mean? He's never ran anywhere. I think there's times where he tied up a lot, you know, um, he held on a lot in certain fights, Cambosos. But he didn't run from Lomachenko at all. You know, in fact, he was in a pocket with Lomachenko. One thing that many of us wasn't expecting leading up to the fight. Um, Devin Haney's not going to run anywhere, you know. And like you guys said, if he gets hit with the amount of left hands that Lomachenko landed, or maybe not that amount, but... Those left hands from Regis Progre, they pack a lot more power. So there's a different danger. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing similar with between Haney and Zaria. Overall, I think Haney's the better talent between the two. But Zaria has that style that could be difficult for certain fighters. He proved to be difficult against Arnold Barbosa. He was difficult against Regis Progre. It's no different from Sandor Martin. He just basically damn near shut out Mikey Garcia and sent him on his way to retirement. And then we saw the fight with Teofimo Lopez, which is another potential opponent. Regis Progre, obviously he looked terrible against George Cambosos. Came back, fought well against a tuna fight at 140. Can't remember, remember the gentleman's name, but he didn't look great against Sandor Martin. You know what I mean? I was at the fight and certain guys that Fight that well in the back foot, good counter punchers, um, good movement, very hard to get to. He didn't look good against Sandor Martin, but he looked phenomenal against the former undisputed champion, Josh Taylor. So you got to look at these fights based on those two, perform uh, two opponents specifically. Devin Haney does not fight like a Karen or a Martin or... Uh, or it was Lanny Lara back in the day, or uh, a Zoria. You know what I mean? He doesn't fight like any of those guys. You know, Devin Haney is going to be there in the mix. And Devin Haney doesn't have the biggest power. But you never know. I mean, it'll be his first fight at 140. Maybe he is stronger at 140 than he was at 135 without being drained. So you never know. You cannot sleep on Devin Haney. I'm assuming that he would be better at 140 based on his strength and his size and him not having to drain himself you know but me personally i think that i think that regis, regis progre it this fight doesn't make me think any differently for of, of him it doesn't change anything with me 
it just makes me know that Zoria is going to be a tough fight regardless of who he faces. Regis Prograde has not fought any other guy that had that kind of style. I think if Regis Prograde would to fight maybe a Sandor Martin or even a Jack Catterall maybe, you have a little bit of issues. Um, when it comes to Devin Haney though, I'm still 50-50 when it comes to that, you know. Um, I think Devin Haney can definitely win a decision. But I also think that Pro Gray can hurt him at any point in the fight. The thing about Pro Gray is that he has very short arms. And he didn't do a good job closing distance when it came to the uh, Zoria fight. He really didn't do a good job. So a guy like Haney, the guy that has long arms... And chooses if he chooses to take a different approach than he did against Lomachenko and really stay on the outside. Because in that fight, I really would suggest strongly that he stay on the outside because he's fighting a really big puncher. Um, he could do better against Regis Progre than he did against Lomachenko round by round as far as scoring. But as far as, you know, him taking a good shot, I've said the same thing about Tank Davis. Tank Davis is a guy like, yeah, you can outbox him or you can be winning certain rounds against him. We've seen that a bunch of times. What happens when you get cracked with a clean shot, though? You know, you're probably most likely going to go down. And I feel the same about Regis Progre. He can be outboxed. He can be outworked. But it's that danger of the, the big left hand that he has. Um. Let me take one thing that I said earlier in this video back. When I said that it doesn't make me think any differently than Regis Prograde, there's one thing that I do realize about Regis Prograde, and I said this on the live broadcast I did the other day. There's a difference between elite fighters, super elite fighters, pound for pound fighters, and really good fighters. Regis Prograde showed me in that night and the biggest thing that disappointed me is that he didn't adjust in any way. You know, as the fight went on, there were certain rounds that he was a little bit more aggressive. But he really didn't have anything outside of that big left hand. You know, um, he didn't know how to close distance. Uh, and being the shorter, uh, less rangier guy, he really didn't really know how to get in position and, and, and land that left. I mean, he landed the left hand early and I felt that that left hand actually woke Zaria up and Zaria fought even more cautious after that you know I think Zaria caught with that caught with that left hand simply because he caught Regis with a good shot in the first round he probably was feeling himself then he got one you know what I'm saying so with that being said Regis Progre failed to adjust in any way these super elite fighters when they're down or when they're getting outworked or when they're getting outboxed a lot of these fighters are either A, they're either going with the plan because they're waiting for the mistake that that opponent always makes to land that big shot. Or B, they're making some sort of adjustment to whatever is not working for them. And Regis Progre, I think if he was exposed in any way this fight, he exposed that he can't really adjust to what was happening in there you know what i mean i think for pro grade yes he got some decent inside game we obviously know that he has a great he's a sniper with that straight left hand but when it came to his jab when it came to fainting i don't know it just seems like he just kind of just kept trying to land the one big single punch and it never came you know but again it could be a lot of things a lot of tangibles there of course he was fighting at home First time fighting in New Orleans in five years. You know, a lot of pressure, you know, just signing with Eddie. It could be a lot of other things, too. You know, maybe if they were to have rematch, maybe he did bet He would do better. Who knows? Maybe Zaria would do better. But it's still hard to call. Well, I know is that Teofima Lopez, I would be more confident of Tio winning that fight if they were to fight. Maybe not so much Devin Haney. But Teofimo Lopez, if they were to fight, I know for a fact that Teo rise to the occasion when it's time for him to really step up. I did a video recently about Teofimo Lopez, and I said, 
he is the most volatile fighter in boxing. He has beaten two of the best fighters in the sport, in Josh Taylor and Lomachenko, right? And he's beaten them better than anybody else has been in the ring. I don't think Catterall, I think Catterall beat Josh Taylor, but when it came to Teal, Teal did it with finesse. He did it with confidence. He did it clearly. No debating. Um, same thing with Lomachenko. People try to debate, you know, Lomachenko lost. I thought it was clear in my eyes that Tiafimo won the fight. Not like Devin Haney, you know, not like anybody else. So Tiafimo, I feel like what I saw in the Tiafimo fight against Josh Taylor a couple weeks ago, I felt like Tiafimo gave me a lot of his game. Like he showed us that he can do everything. Whereas Regis Progre, big power in that left hand, very accurate with that left hand. But he's very limited. He kind of made himself look one-dimensional. You know what I mean? Now, we've seen that in every single fight, and it always worked for him. But this time around, he really needed to change something up because he was on the way to losing the fight. And he really didn't give me anything else but the same thing over and over again, which wasn't working for him. All right? I don't think Teofimo comes back unless it's a lot of money. I don't believe it's going to be $100 million, but... You know, and I don't even think he's really going to retire. But I think if anyone is going to bring Teofimo Lopez back, they're going to have to pay him a certain amount, much more higher than what he's been getting recently. All right. So, um, and Devin Haney, same thing. Devin Haney is not going to go anywhere for pennies and crumbs, whether it's Showtime, whether it's the zone, whether it's back on top rank. Devin Haney is going to want to get paid. So, I don't know if Eddie is willing to dish out that kind of money to pull Devin Haney back over to match room. You know, I just don't think so. And these guys are going to want to get Devin Haney wherever he decides whether he stays on top rank, you know, wherever he goes or moves up to 140. They're probably going to want to do some sort of multi-fight deal, you know, two, three fight deal. Not a long one, but two, three fight deal. Danny, Devin Haney, even though he's young. Him and his dad, the way they move, they're moving like bosses very early. You know, Canelo, Cotto, you know, Mayweather, other fighters, they kind of got to that level once they were, like, in a later part of their career. Devin Haney is already at that stage, very young in his career. You know what I mean? Um, so, anyway, um, that's my thought on Regis Progre, Devin Haney, T.O., all these guys around the 140 area. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, if those fights, neither one of those fights happen for Regis Progre, uh, hopefully maybe they'll do a Jack Catterall fight because he's already with Matchroom. Or, you know, maybe we can get some unifications with Sabrio Matias. Uh, who else is the champion over at 140? Can't remember. Um, you know, I know Stevie Spark is still around. Uh, I think uh, Montana Love is still, you know, I don't know. I don't know, but... Regis Progre should have some sort of options over there being with Eddie and Matchroom. All right, but if he's not going to get one of those big fights, maybe Eddie will put, some, put him in there with someone that people respect in order for him to redeem himself. Because even though he got the win, it was a highly disputable win, especially because of those terrible scorecards. All right, so anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments. Please subscribe to the channel, smash the like button. I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.